Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to FWF Final Fantasy 3. It does not begin at this very second, however, this is the pre-show, the build-up for each of the matches. I've already done matches leading up to it, but I haven't, you know, actually discussed exactly what was going to happen at the pay-per-view. All the matches in order and all this stuff, how they're going to go down, who's going to be in it, the story behind it, we're going to talk about that in this video in 3, 2, 1. So to start off, we will begin the three stages of hell match between Sub-Zero and Vegeta for the FWF World Heavyweight Championship. Vegeta, the former champion, lost the title to Sub-Zero at Deadly Series, no, not Deadly Series, uh, Immortality 3 where Vegeta successfully defended his title in an elimination chamber after coming out at number one. Sub-Zero then comes out and takes advantage of a wounded Vegeta, Vegeta and wins. Vegeta, not happy with this, says, you know what, I don't think you can beat me. And then Sub-Zero says, I can beat you twice in one day. And then Vegeta was like, oh really? Well, how about we do something a two out of three falls match, and then Sub-Zero one-ups him going, well, how about it be a three stages of hell match? Which should be an interesting concept. I mean, I mean, the first fall, as chosen by the champion, is a regular one-on-one -on -one match, just to show that he is better than Vegeta, at least is what he says, he's better than Vegeta in the ring. So if they fight in the first one-on-one -on -one match, he should be able to beat Vegeta. Vegeta says, okay, well, since we already did a one-on-one -on -one match, the next fall... Excuse me. Excuse me again. The next fall should be a Extreme Rules match with weapons. Because he says Sub-Zero is going to need it after he loses to Vegeta. Is what he was saying. And then if necessary, since Sub-Zero is the champion, he got to pick the last fall. Sub-Zero says the match should be a Hell in the Cell match. A match that Sub-Zero has never lost in and says he will win again after already being in two matches, if it is necessary. So, that's going to be happening throughout the night. So we'll have like Sub-Zero and Vegeta fight. And then two matches will happen. Then they'll fight again. And then three more matches will happen. And then they'll fight again right before the main event match, which we'll get to later. And I almost forgot to mention that uh, Sub-Zero is, well, he was the first ever Money in the Bank winner. That's how he got to cash in and take the title from uh, Vegeta. There you go. Uh, I didn't want to cut his face out of the shot, but he's in there. We got the Tag Team Championships on the line after the first fall of the Three Stages of Hell match. Um, it will be Marvel DC, Spider-Man, and Superman taking on the Joker and Deathstroke. The Do Joker and Deathstroke winning a tournament to become the number one contenders. Marvel DC ended up beating um, Iron Man, their leader actually, and Captain America for the Tag Team Championships back at, I want to say Night of Nights? Did they beat them? I think they beat them at Night of Yeah, they did in the tables match, yeah. That's how they got the titles. Um, as you can see, they're wearing their black attires. I've been saving Superman's attire, and then Spider-Man I just... I've already, you've already seen it, but you know, here it is again, you know. So they will be facing their challengers, a former FWF champion in uh, the Joker, a former world heavyweight champion, uh, and Superman, a two-time world heavyweight champion, Superman. So Deathstroke, the only one to yet to win a title, and this could be his moment here if he ends up winning this match. By the way, Harley Quinn will be ringside for the tag team, well, the, not the tag team champions, the uh, opponents, the challengers of the tag team champions. And I guess Iron Man will be ringside as well because Harley Quinn is there. I don't know. I don't, don't really make much sense to me whether or not they're going to have like a guy and a girl on the outside. I don't think it will really matter though, you know. If it's happened before in WWE, it probably can happen here in a show that is Fantasy Warfare Federation. And this one, I mean, if you want to talk about animosity, if you want to talk about, like, a bad relationship, just 
two people who just absolutely despise each other, you think of this match right here. Because I believe this is the, yeah, this is the most personal match of them all. And it's not even really that serious. It's all about betrayal. When you have friends that you hang out with all the time, they've always been there, you've always been there for them, you push them to be better, they push you to be better. And you were their leader. And then they betray you. To go to someone else who you don't who you've never encountered, really, and you've never really had an issue with up until that point, where they decide to attack you and join that person who is also attacking you. Bla talking about Black Widow, she gets betrayed by She Hulk and Invisible Woman who decide to side with a, a two time former champion in Jean Grey because they believe they'll have more success by being with Jean Grey, which makes absolutely no sense because you will not have any success if you are working for someone who is only out for themselves. And Jean Grey has always been that way. It's not like a bad thing. She's always been trying to be champion. The only championship the woman have is a singles title and you think associating yourself with two other people will help you it only works if you're the leader it only works that way but they don't understand that and Jean Grey is able to take advantage of it but Black Widow because Jean Grey is the one who organized this issue Black Widow wants to fight Jean Grey they've had many of matches the first time they fought uh, Jean Grey ended up outclassing Black Widow, and Black Widow, oh, she wasn't too happy about that one at all. She wanted revenge, and she did so. She did get revenge at, uh, what was it? What? Where did she finally get her revenge? Yes, okay, so she got revenge on her friends in a tag team match with uh, Harley Quinn. Then she got revenge on Jean Grey and them, all as a group, when she got with uh, Android 18 and Harley Quinn in that Elimination Chamber match where it was a clean sweep victory. Jean Grey was upset of how she lost via Queen Sweep. There was not even, wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. It was just like that. It wasn't even close. And Jean Grey, out of frustration, gets herself disqualified in the tournament to determine the number one contender, causing Black Widow to move on, but she did not win. She was taken out by her friend, Harley Quinn. But uh, Jean Grey hitting Black Widow with a chair. You know Black Widow's going to want some revenge on that. And she was holding off until she got the opportunity to do so. Jean Grey said, I want you alone against me. And Black Widow says, now if I fight you, I, you won't be alone. I know that. And it's going to be my former friends jumping me because you decided, you know, you took over their minds. Brainwashed them or whatever. And Black Widow, whoa. Oh, I was trying to figure what happened there. Okay, so Black Widow says, okay, I'll face you on one condition if you leave your friends behind. And Jean Grey says, no, it's not going to happen. So I stepped in. I said, you know what? Chung Lee, you got to put these girls in their place. And Chung Lee says, well, we should have Black Widow versus Jean Grey, yes, in a one-on-one -on -one match. But only if Black Widow can beat Jean Grey's partners. And she did. She beat them. And that really benefited Black Widow. And then Jean Grey says, you know what? Black Widow's been in all these matches. I need to prepare myself. She faces Harley Quinn in an Extreme Rules match and wins, showing that she is ready. So now we are finally here in this Extreme Rules match. It will be false count anywhere. And it will be Black Widow versus Jean Grey. No title contention. No nothing. Just two chicks beating the hell out of each other. What more can you ask for, you know? And now we move on to this match. This match probably has the least amount of buildup of them all. We got the champion Joker. Joker. The champion Cobra Commander taking on Trevor Phillips from GTA 5. Cobra has been pretty much unstoppable at this point. I mean, no one's been able to beat Cobra. He has been... Actually, he only has one loss. And that has been against Iron Man, who was just simply better on that night. Cobra... We'll be facing Trevor Phillips in a TLC match. Only way to win is to climb the ladder and take down the championship. And this match will not be controlled by the computer because the match is going to suck if it's controlled by the computer. I have to control both of them and I will try to win for both sides. No bias will be shown. It will be a great match in my opinion because I'm pretty sure I can think of a lot of cool spots to do in that match.
Cobra winning the title in a tournament, a warfare tournament, where all the matches were taken to the extreme, and Cobra was able to pull out the victory, becoming the champion, and then defeating Deadpool in his first title defense, I believe. Yeah, his first title defense, he defeated Deadpool. I think that was his only title defense so far. However, that was a great match, and he won. It was a Hell in a Cell match. Cobra faced Trevor Phillips in a TLC match. Why? Because we, I don't think we've done a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, we have. No, we've done a one-on-one -on -one ladder match. We've never done a one-on-one -on -one TLC match. So this should be a pretty great match. No, unless Batman and Robin, their match in the ladder or TLC match was a TLC match or a ladder match. It depends on that. But I believe this is the first time we've done this. Trevor becoming the number one contender by competing in a Fatal 4 where he didn't even have to earn to be in it. But he did earn the right to face Cobra, eliminating, I believe, no, he eliminated Green Ranger. Green Ranger eliminated two people, but Trevor eliminated Green Ranger with a pile driver onto a sledgehammer head, which is like, vicious as hell. But what do you expect? Can he do that to Cobra and beat him? I don't know. I mean, Cobra's been able to outsmart all of his opponents. I thought Deadpool was going to beat him, and he made Deadpool tap out. So, this match is about climbing a ladder. Trevor, of course, fully capable of climbing the ladder, but I don't know how this is going to go down for him. I think he's capable. I just don't know if he's going to win. It's all about either Trevor's psycho moveset or you got Cobra's wit. So it's either going to be crazy and courageous or cowardly and smart. We'll see. From the once undefeated Cobra to the man who finally ended his win winning streak, the international champion Iron Man will be defending his title against Little Mac and the Hulk. The Hulk has been the number one contender before, actually. He fought uh, Sub-Zero in the last pay-per-view, and he lost via countout. He was tombstone on the floor, he could not make the count, and Sub-Zero retained the championship. Cobra won no. Hulk wants to redeem himself. Little Mac, however, on the other end, he feels he deserves, and he doesn't feel he deserves to be champion. He just feels he has to walk up, walk out of this one and win. He feels he is the underdog because you have the really, really powerful Hulk, and then you have the smart and the crafty Iron Man in this match. How is he going to prevail? I don't know. I don't think he can overcome these odds. He hasn't been able to beat the Hulk. Actually, yes, he ha he did. I take that back. I stand corrected for once. I am wrong. He did defeat the Hulk, and that's because of Iron Man being the special guest referee when these two men were fighting. Iron Man kept interfering, and the Hulk kept stopping him, and then he just kept getting distracted by Iron Man. He turns around into a three-star punch, taking out the Hulk. If one three-star punch can beat the Hulk, I wonder how this match is going to go down. That's a big question there, because... Iron Man, of course, he's going to be looking for the sphere. He's going to be looking for the uh, stroke of genius. I don't know if he's going to do it. But he's been champion for quite some time now. He's been champion since Deadly Series. He defeated Ray Hayabusa for the championship. Defeated him again. Pretty much the only man he's defended it against so far. Now he defends it against two people. Will he be able to retain? I don't know. Or maybe it's Hulk's time. Or maybe Little Mac will be a fast rising star with a very, very bad record. Who knows? From one triple threat match to another, we have Chung Li, the champion, the Superwoman's champion, taking on Supergirl and Android 18. Android 18 earning the right to be in this match by winning a tournament, becoming the number one contender. She was supposed to just be facing Supergirl, but Chung Li went off script and won. She still beat her. Supergirl got her title rematch, and Chung Li proved she deserved to beat. She had every right, she had every capability to beat Supergirl. And Supergirl, Supergirl, well, she really wants to be able to beat, uh, she really wants to be able to beat Chung Li, but she hasn't even beat Android 18 or Chung Li yet. So how is she going to win this triple threat? Like, that's almost impossible for her. And Android 18, her streak was ended by Chung Li, so Chung Li's got the most momentum going into this one. Android 18, I can't say is the underdog. None of these are the really the underdog. I mean, you got an alien, you got an android, and you got like this freaking jujitsu fighting styles kick machine known as Chung Li. 
And it's not elimination. It's one pinfall. So Chun Li couldn't even be in the, the decision and lose. It's very, very possible. And could this match top Iron Man, Little Mac, and Sh not Sh I almost called him She Hulk, The Hulk? Wow, that would have been a damn near insult. Damn. Wow. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's based on your opinion. I'm pretty sure everyone thinks Chun Li, Supergirl, and Andrew 18 are going to tear the house down because their matches get the most views out of anyone. I mean, every time I do a Superwoman's match, or Superwoman's division match, it's watched. It gets attention, you know? And I'm pretty sure this one's going to be really, really good. I don't know who's going to win. I mean, Ch Chun Li, right now, I got my money on Chun Li because of the momentum that she has behind her. I mean, Andrew 18. And his triple threat. I don't think we've seen her in a multi, multi men or multi woman competition before. Actually, we have, but I was on a team, never, never alone by herself. And then you got a uh, Supergirl who's been in a multi woman competition. She won to become the champion for the first time when Chung Lee had been taken out, and then she lost when Chung Lee was actually here. So is Chung Lee like an effect? Has does she have an effect on Supergirl's success? That's the question right there, because every time Chung Li is champion, Supergirl can't take the title from her unless Chung Li does not have the championship. That's the only time Supergirl becomes champion, it seems. I don't know. It's an interesting theory, but I don't know. But we have this match, then the end of the uh <clears throat> of the uh three seasons of hell match. If necessary, and then we go on to the main event. This match, the main event, is for the FWF Championship. And all the hype, all the preparation for Ryu Hayabusa to face Super Boo. It all comes to a head. But what happens when the ref counts three, the lights are on bright, and you got the cult of personality by Living Color playing in the background as Super Boo retains. What if Super Boo retains? After all that, what if Super Boo still pulls out and becomes champion, and then all this for Ayahad Buju was just pointless? What if? Ayahad Buju has to win, and I mean, Super Boo has to win as well. He's had one victory in uh, Final Fantasy, and then he's lost in, in his first Final Fantasy. Raya Hayabuja, however, has never won in Final Fantasy ever. He lost to Flame, and he lost to the Joker last year. So is he able, can he even win at this preview? Is this his poison? Is this his kryptonite? Is this what he can't succeed in? Is this, is this it? What is, what is left for Raya Hayabuja if he loses this match? He can become a three-time champion, or he can become 0-3 at the big pay-per-view of FWF. Super Boo doesn't really have a lot to lose. I mean, actually, he does. The championships. I mean, that is a lot to lose. But if he loses, he has a rematch. Right, Hayabuja, that's he didn't have a rematch. Unless he gets fucked over. I mean, it's the only way. It's the only thing I can think of. And Super Boo, his title defenses have just been him decimating his opponents. He didn't ever need to cheat, ever. And that's the thing. Is anyone ever going to beat him? Is Ryan Hayabusa the guy? But Ryan Hayabusa can't even beat Vegeta, who Super Boo can't beat. So, I mean, what is it? What's it going to be? Can he do it? Or what? Is Ryan Hayabusa not defeating Vegeta? Someone who's defeated Super Boo on multiple occasions and then having to face the guy who... He lost, well, I can't, you get the point, you do, you get it, I know you do, I know you get it. I mean, I've, I've been having Ray Hayabuja put over so much talent, and then he gets to this point where he is able to shine, but if he loses, then, what was the point? This is not even, this is one-on-one, -on -one. this is, you only get one fall, all you, that's all you got, that's the only way you can leave, is, I winning one, you just have to make them tap out. You just have to get one pinfall. That's it. That's all you have to do. But can he do it? Is the question. So I will see you for FWF Final Fantasy 3. Thanks for watching the preview. And I guess that's it.